Hey family and friendsies, welcome back to another vlog. I am winding down for the evening, guys, so that's why I'm in my bonnet. Nothing cute at all. I just wanted to come on here and talk to y'all about what it was like growing up in the projects in Jersey City. Yes, that's right, y'all. Your girl was born and raised in the projects. I don't think I ever talked about that on our channel, um, but I think it would be a good topic to talk about. You know, a lot of people talking about it, so I figured, why not? Uh, I was born and raised in Montgomery Gardens in Jersey City, New Jersey. I lived there until I was about, I want to say 23 or 24. I may be wrong, maybe off by a year or two. But I lived there my whole entire childhood. Um, I grew up with my mother and father in the household, which was an absolute blessing. Most of my friends who, and you know, some of my family members as well, you know, uh, grew up in single parent households. So I can say that I was absolutely blessed to have my mother and my father in my right. life. We had six buildings. We lived in the building all the way in the back. It was building six. I'll never forget it. We lived on a ninth floor apartment, nine, six, dash six. I will never forget that, y'all. I even remember our um, home phone number from back in the day when I was in grammar school. You know, 201451. <laughs> but anyway, I can say that I had a great childhood, y'all. Uh, Our family was so big. We had family in every single building within that housing project. Every building. So everyone knew our family. A lot of people look at those who live in the projects or grew up in the projects as, you know, that project chick or, you know, the poor family or, you know, just straight up drug dealers, uneducated people. I'm not saying that all people look at people who come from the projects that way, but a lot of people do. The image of project living that you see on TV nowadays, what are they showing? They're showing people high. They're showing the drug dealers standing out on the corner. They're showing people getting shot. You know, it wasn't like that when I was growing up. Now I can say later on in life, things started getting worse, but we'll talk about that later. But anyway, when I was growing up, you know, like I said, we lived in a three bedroom apartment. I can remember living with my siblings. I have one sister and three brothers. Um, growing up in the projects was fun, you know, as a child, I can't say it was really fun. Um, some people think about living in the projects and having this image of, oh, they're shooting every day. All you see is people fighting and stuff like that. That wasn't the case when I was growing up. Now, I'd be lying if I told you there weren't any fights. Of course, I remember at a young age, y'all, I used to be ashamed of where I lived when I was younger because, you know, sometimes the kids would make little comments about living in the projects and things like that. And it used to make me feel bad. I could also remember um, when I was starting to date or like like boys and talk to boys and things like that. I wouldn't even tell them where I lived because I didn't want them to know that I lived in the projects. I didn't want them to look at me as that ghetto girl or, you know, that project chick, you know, as, you know, some people will look at people who was born and raised in the project. And another reason why I didn't tell guys where I lived is because I didn't want them to dislike me for where I lived. You know, back then, you know, um, projects had like this dangerous image, like don't go to the projects unless you know somebody there. You know, um, Jersey City is not that far from Newark, New Jersey. And you know, anyone from around that area knew about Prince Street projects. Now I had family who lived in Prince Street projects and I can remember going to visit our family over there and they used to have to meet us outside literally and like escort us upstairs to their building. Like that's how bad it was. Like anytime I can remember pulling up with my family, my father parking the car. And from the time we park to the time we get out and meet our cousins in front of the building, like all eyes was on us. Like all eyes. It's like, you know, I didn't want to have that image of, you know, being that project chick or you know i don't want to go around there because she live in a dangerous place or whatever i don't want to talk to her you know she's dirty she's not about nothing now i'm not saying everyone felt that way but in my mind that's how i felt you know i was a little embarrassed you know i was young so aside from all that you know a lot of people also look at people who 
grew up in the projects or who was living in the projects as being like super poor. Yeah, it's low income uh, family housing, yes, but you know, just because you live in the projects does not mean that you're not living a, a good life and that you're not happy. Um, me and my family, we was always happy, you know. I can tell you one thing, if my parents ever struggled, I never knew it, never knew it. My father, like I grew up in a traditional household with my mother and my father. My father was a truck driver. So he was the breadwinner. My mother was a housewife. She took care of home. So that's how I was raised. My father would come home. I can remember my father coming home. He brings the money. He gives my mother money. Um, and we was that traditional family, you know? That's how I was raised. I remember like back in the day, you know, when my siblings were still living at home, you know, summertime, being outside, my brothers was either always on a basketball court playing basketball or just sitting on the bench talking to their friends. And the bench was always like in front of the buildings. In front of each building, there was always a bench, you know. That's the uh, the, the meeting place, I should say. <laughs> that's where that's where Shanique would braid it, Ray Ray's hair and cornrows every day with that blue hair grease. <laughs> But um, I'm just playing y'all, but yeah, but that's facts. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I can remember those good times. We had the best summer like block party. We also had the best family trips. They gave family trips um, almost every summer. I wouldn't say every summer, but almost every summer they were going somewhere. They gave a trip somewhere. And I would have to say the best family trip that they gave in the housing project that I lived in was the trip to uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, where we went to Bush Garden. That trip was so much fun. I will never forget it, y'all. Y'all, our family is so big, and we had so much family there. We had a whole entire bus to ourselves. My whole entire family. Now, there were a lot of friends that became family who lived there, so all of us was on the same bus, and that was just so much fun. And that day when we took that trip to Virginia, we had like four buses leave from our housing project. So it was really nice. And also like, like I said, I had family in every building when I lived there in Montgomery and um, no drama, there was no fights, just everyone having a good time. I could also remember guys while growing up in Montgomery, um, a lot of people there, we all, we may not have known each other's name, but we knew each other's face where we know like, okay, he's from Montgomery or she's from Montgomery, you know, but I can remember going to the grocery store and my parents buying a lot of groceries. I can remember pulling up to our building in the parking lot. We had like a, uh, a parking lot with like, I want to say maybe like 10 or 12 parking spaces where, um, my father used to pull up and we used to take our groceries out of the back because mind you, we lived on the ninth floor. I can remember times when our elevator was broken. The elevator used to always break, y'all, and it seemed like the elevator always broke during the summer. I never understood that. I never understood it. I remember my father unpacking the car and just pulling all the bags out, and if there's a guy just walking around the building or he could be coming through, leaving the building, like they would literally just stop and just help us. Um, I can remember times when they would walk us all the way up to the ninth floor with our bags and wouldn't even think twice about asking for any money for it. And I can remember, you know, the people in Montgomery, um, everyone respected the elders. Like my mother and my father was always respected. You never, you know, seen any like young kids, like, you know, cursing in front of them or, or if they like did slip up and said a curse word in front of my parents, they would always say, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize, you know. Um, my mother was known as Mrs. Reader or either Ma. They always called my father Pops. Like, you know, they were so respectful. It was like those who lived there, you know, it seemed like the families was close knit. The friends was close knit. Like I said, the friends became family. And it seemed like a lot of people just looked out for each other when we lived in Montgomery. They looked out for each other. I also remember one year, I think I was probably about, I want to say... 12 or 13 years old i used to love to double dutch i had a double dutch rope which was an actual clothesline you remember the white clotheslines from back in the day if you jumped rope back in the day i'm sure you know exactly what i'm talking about that white clothesline that hurt if you got hit with that rope whenever you was jumping but anyway <laughs> i remember we had like a huge team post tournament 
and that was when um, the pre-teens pre and teens, we got together and we battled each other. Like the projects in Jersey City, we battled each other in the championship for double dutch, volleyball, and basketball. And that was so nice. It was like a huge event. Everything was happening like at one time in one day. And um, we had like, I want to say we had Montgomery, we had Duncan Projects, we had Lafayette, we had Booker T., and we had Marion Gardens. That, those were the projects in Jersey City. And, um, like, I can't remember which project we battled that day. But, um, I want to say it was either Marion or Duncan. I don't know. I can't remember. Whoever it was. Um, the teams from Montgomery Gardens won. And I was on the Double Dutch team. And that was so much fun. We won. And see, yes, we grew up in the projects. But we did fun things. The projects is not always gloom. Projects can be fun. You know, it's all in what you make. Not forget Curry Woods. Curry Woods was also there too. That was another project that battled us um, during the team post championship. And um, back then, Curry Woods project was known to be the worst projects, well, one of the worst projects in Jersey City. And people used to be scared to go to Curry Woods. Also, remember back in the day when the Wiz movie first came out with Michael Jackson and Diana Ross. They gave a bus ride to the movie theater to go and see that movie, and that was so much fun. I was there with my family and my friends. That was a great day, and let alone, you know the movie is awesome anyway, so we had a great time that day. Y'all, I can remember as a kid growing up, uh, this is when I was in grammar school, we had the Candy Lady in Montgomery Projects. She lived in the same building as my aunt. My aunt, li my aunt lived in Building 5 on the fourth floor, and the candy lady, if I'm not mistaken, the candy lady was on the third floor. And y'all, whenever we went to her house, her whole entire living room, y'all, was the candy store. She had candy, like, wrapped around, like, cleaned around her living room, like, all the way around. It was nothing but candies. It was like heaven to a kid. <laughs> and she used to literally sell the candies out of her apartment, y'all. Like, yeah, she, she sold candies out of her apartment. I can remember going there, getting 50 cent worth of jingles. Who remember jingles from back in the day? The purple ones was the best, y'all. Tastes just like purple Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, y'all, Miss Betsy, the candy lady, she had some of the best candies from back in the day. So, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert a few pictures that you guys could take a look at at some of the old school candies from back in the day. And we also had the Icy Lady. And if you're from Jersey, I don't know if um, they sell ice, these type of ices, but the, the cup ices, you know, you make it out of Kool-Aid, just put it in the freezer. And y'all, aside from the Candy Lady, we also had the Icy Lady, you know, the Icy Lady who sold the ices that out of her deep freezer in her apartment for 50 cent a cup. Large cup was a dollar. <laughs> But um, eventually, my sister, when she moved out of the apartment and got her own, she became the icy lady eventually. And my sister, she was the bomb icy lady because she had pina colada, she had watermelon, she had orange. You couldn't tell her nothing. <laughs> I love my sister icy's because they were good. They were the bomb. And those icy's hit different when it's hot outside. Unfortunately, I don't have any pics um, that I know of from back then. But I do have a clip that I want to insert and I'm going to show you the exact building where we live and I'm going to point to the windows that was our actual apartment, the apartment that I grew up in as a kid. Building where we used to collect our mail. Our mail wasn't um, outside, y'all. You know how some places um, the mailboxes are outside. You just literally walk outside and go to the mailbox. It's, ours wasn't. Ours was inside a building. And inside the room in this building, it was called the mail room. This is called the management office, put it that way. In the management office, that we where, that's where we collected our mail. And um, the mailboxes used to just be lined up against the wall, cleaning around the office. It was just a bunch of mailboxes lined up against the wall. And I can remember walking to this building, to the mailbox with my father as a kid. 